Here is a mini lecture about the linking number. Um, this is for our course MX4540. Not theory, uh, the topics, well, no, the relevant part of our course notes are definitions, uh, definition 1.16 up to theorem 1.19. Um, as usual, change the quality settings on your video if you like, it might help. So, here is the definition of the linking number. Let L be an oriented link. It has to be oriented, otherwise we can't do it. The linking number, which is written look L, link L, is defined as follows. First, choose a diagram, call it D, of our link L. And then the definition is that the linking number is one half of the sum of the signs that's a disastrous box uh, let's try it this way the linking number is one half of the sum of the signs of the crossings in D where we have to be careful where C the crossings we're summing over ranges over all crossings of D where different components meet. So the idea is simple. We look at the diagram D, we work out all the signs, we add them up and we divide by two, except we only add up the signs at the crossings where there are different components of the link. Okay, so let's go on and do an example. Well, Let's go through the definition. Let L be an oriented link. Here's an oriented link. Uh, the linking number is defined as follows. First, choose a diagram of L. Well, this, which is our picture of the link, also serves as a diagram. So that's good, we've got a diagram. Then the linking number is one half the sum of the signs of the crossings over certain of the crossings. So let's start by working out the signs of the crossings. Uh, I think you should uh, have a go at pausing and working out the signs for yourself. Um, I'll just go ahead and do it. So what am I doing? I'm drawing the arrows coming out of every crossing because then it makes it easier for me to see what the signs are going to be. And now I work out the signs. That's a plus one. That is a plus one. Uh, that's a minus one. Minus one. Ah, I didn't put this little arrow on. There we go, but that's a minus one. There. Um, what's missing here? That's plus one. And here, plus one. You can run out of space in these diagrams quite easily. Um, yeah, that looks good to me. Okay, so here are all the signs, and so I feel like the linking number ought to be one half of the sum of the signs of the crossings, which would be one, 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 one. Minus one, minus one, minus one. So three plus ones, and uh, sorry, four plus ones. Let's count them carefully. One, two, three. Four plus ones and one, two, three minus ones. But of course, I broke the rules. Why? Because I wasn't careful enough. The linking number is one half of the sum of the signs. Well, that's what I did. Where the crossings we're counting, where C, the things we're summing over, ranges over all crossings of D where different components meet. So I need to go back to my picture and work out where do the different components meet. So let's raise these little blobs and let's work out what the different components are. So uh, let's start on this component and see how much of the link it gives us. It's that part. Let's choose a different color and a different component. There we go. And let's choose a final color and the final component 
So we see that the link has three components. Now, where do different components meet? Well, at this crossing, actually, let's just put a little blob next to every crossing that we're going to count. Uh, so at this crossing, the pink and the blue components meet, so we will count it. At this crossing, the uh, blue and orange components meet, so we will count it. At this one, pink and orange meet, so we will count it. Here, pink and orange meet, so we will count it. Here, orange and blue meet, so we will count it. Here, pink and blue meet, so we'll count it. And here, this crossing involves only the pink component, so we will not count it. So let's erase our incorrect computation of the linking number. And now let's do it properly. So I'm going to count the four red crossings. So there's plus one, plus one, plus one, one, two, three. No, there's four plus ones and two minus ones. So this is one half of four minus two, which is one half of two, which is one. Excellent. OK. Uh, as usual, standard health warning, I could easily have made an error. So it's up to you to check this for yourself. And if you think you found an error, please leave a comment on the YouTube video. Now, I want you all to pause the video and have a go at this one as an exercise. So the question is, the, link in, the linking number of this link is what? So pause, have a go. Here is my solution. I'm going to do what I always do. I don't know the answer in advance, by the way. I haven't worked this out before in my life. Okay, things are getting a bit tight inside the diagram. Uh, never mind. Um, hmm. Brilliant. Okay. So uh, let's work out the sign here. That's minus one. Uh, the sign here is plus one. Here is plus one. In here, also plus one. This one's minus one, this one's minus one, this one's minus one too. Let me double check. By the way, how on earth am I working out these signs? Well, um, if you look at the previous video, it gives you the method for doing it. And um, I think that the answer is that I've been doing this long enough that I can just uh, look at these things and, and see what they are. But the previous video gives you methods for doing it. So I don't expect you to be able to work out the signs as quickly as that right now, but after you've done quite a few, um, then you'll start getting that way. So let's just, um, let, let me just go through and check the signs here. So that on I do agree is a minus one. This one is a plus one, also plus, also plus, minus as well, minus, minus. Okay, I'm happy with my signs. Um, now I need to know which crossings should I count in the linking number. Um, so let's work out how many components we have in our links. Well, in our link. Well, here's one component. And here's another one. So there's two components and every crossing here, 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 at every crossing I have two components meeting except there, except at the top crossing where the red component crosses itself. So now I compute the linking number, it's one half of uh, plus one, plus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one. Uh, which is minus 1. 
Excellent. Okay, is that your answer? Uh, feel free to rewind the video, check, see whether you agree with me or not. Okay, so this is the practical side. How do we compute the linking number? Here are some more uh, theoretical questions. Here's a potential problem, and it's a real problem. Remember the definition of the linking number. How did it start? It said, choose a diagram D of the link L. Well, this is a potential disaster, right? Because uh, there are many different possible diagrams for the same link L. Maybe they give us different linking numbers. Then what use is this linking number? Nothing. So maybe the linking number depends on the choice of diagram. And uh, a related potential disaster is that maybe the linking number L changes if we replace L with an equivalent link L primed. Remember, links are equivalent if we uh, can deform them one into the other in three dimensions. We would like that to not change the linking number um, because then the linking number will be useful. Um, except, again, maybe uh, that's not going to happen. Well, the theorem we have, uh, it's theorem 1.19 in our notes, um, tells us that the linking number is actually a well-defined invariant of oriented links. Now, what does this well-defined mean? It means that it doesn't depend on the diagram. doesn't depend on the diagram. And what does this phrase invariant mean? It means that the linking number doesn't change if we replace L by something equivalent called L primed. So that if L and L prime are equivalent, then the linking number of L is equal to the linking number of L primed. So the proof of this theorem is going um, is going to be covered later. It's proved using the Rydermeister moves, but here's an immediate corollary. Something you might have assumed was already true, um, but really does take the theorem in order in order for us to be able to say it. It says that if the linking number of two links are not equivalent uh, are not equal, if the linking number of L1 is not equal to the linking number of L2, then the links L1 and L2 are not equivalent. Have we seen an example of this? That's a final question. Uh, give L1, L2 examples of L1 and L2 such that L1 is not equivalent to L2. There we are. That's the end of our video.